uh thank you parul for having me in such an interesting course of yours uh india over the years has been almost a hotbed for uh ebovin gland disease and the prevalence of the dry eye is basically increasing rampantly and the peer reviewed uh, peer reviewed literature has also proved that the dry eye incidence due to mebovin gland disease especially all over the world is on an increase so in today's era with unhealthy food habits increased screen time increased use of air conditioning the dry eye has really uh, caused a sort of an epidemic and this dry eye basically like uh, has been explained before is either two types either an active dry or efficient dry eye or an evaporative dry eye and in most of these cases drops are al alone are not sufficient especially in the severe cases and there is a need for the newer treatment modalities for mgd and dry eye these newer modalities as already a few have been spoken about uh, this slide basically lists the various newer uh, treatment modalities and i would be basically talking about the uh, irpl or the ei the ei basically is an intense regulated pulse light therapy and it is uh, especially useful only in mebovin gland dysfunction the basic advantage of the ei is that it's got a flash lamp technology that makes it possible to achieve neurological stimulation it's a regulated flash delivery and it is 20 to 25% more uh, effective than conventional ipl treatment and almost 87% of the patients develop a better uh, satisfaction rate even after the first treatment so this is a general comparison between the ei and the conventional ipl devices the main difference basically being the ipl devices are basically treat are for the treatment of the skin conditions and the uh, it uh, follows a vascular mechanism of action which is linked to the skin rosacea and it is incompatible with the neurological stimulation and therefore the efficacy rate in the ipl devices is much lower as compared to the irpl devices so what are the steps to perform an ei basically we need to see that there are no contraindications generally pregnant patients patients with a uh, uh, very dark skin uh patients with some skin disorders patients with tattoos around the eye or a permanent eye makeup these are the general contraindications make sure that there are no cosmetic products if there are any cosmetic products around the eye this should be cleaned before the procedure is done all the moles or any dark pigmented spots around in the treatment area should be covered with the patches which are supplied with the unit you see that you put in a uh, a pit the patient on a on a uh, uh safety goggles which cover the eye apply a generous quality quantity of the gel on the lower lid following which you adjust the power depending on the skin tone so the the uh, the, uh, the unit comes with a skin tone chart and depending on the skin tone you could go in for the power from 9.8 to 13 joules per centimeter square so all the safety measures are then unlocked it is important that the applicator uses his own safety goggles following which the procedure is started and five flashes are applied starting from the inner canthus and ending in the temporal region as well as a shot is given in the zygomatic area and this is then repeated on the other side following with the removal of the uh, of the gel so this is a video which uh, depicts so what happens is in a mebovin gland disease since the mebum is not expressed there is a deficient lipid layer and with the ei treatment what we explained this is how the uh, the uh, power is selected and having done that we need to validate all the warnings so all the warnings are being validated over here in this uh, screen and once this is done the machine is ready to give the ei treatment the patient is now prepared so the treatment the the eyes are covered with a safety goggles a copious amount of the gel is applied to the treatment area and the flashes are delivered now how this basically treats is that there is a afferent stimulation through the zygomatic nerve which leads to an efferent uh, uh, efferent uh, uh, pathway to the uh, parasympathetic uh, nerve for both the lacrimal glands and the mebovin glands and it helps to uh, release the mebum and re-regularize the lipid layer so these are some of the literature searches which we did and this was an uh, article by uh, cabanero et al 
and we showed that it was helpful to treat the evaporative dry eye syndrome produced by the mebovin gland disease basically this was effective in both the eyes which had no surgeries no prior surgeries as well as the eyes treated uh, with seco emulsification and prk both had favorable outcomes following the ti treatment again this was another study by uh, emin karaka et al and which showed the safe treatment procedure for mebovin gland dysfunction and an improvement in the tear film quality and reduction of the symptoms of dry eye generally quite a few other studies also revealed that there was an improvement of the uh, breakup time improvement of the shermer score and basically there was a symptomatic relief with the patient had so who can benefit from it basically dry eye which is predominantly evaporative in nature pre lasik patients with mgd and dry eye prior to multifocal iols with patients with mgd glaucoma patients who are intolerant to drugs patients with contact lens intolerance patients basically which which have pain without pain type of dry eye the post cataract surgery dryness as well as the post refractive surgery dryness so basically the treatment protocol includes three compulsory treatments day 0 day 15 and day 45 with a fourth treatment on day 75 which is optional so how do we assess the treatment the success of the treatment basically at every visit we need to do a shermer strip test and oxford grading for staining is done at every visit to see the improvement again an osdi score for the uh, subjective improvement has done on every visit and an idra analysis which is an ocular surface analyzer is done to measure the uh, uh, mebog uh, to measure uh, to check the mebographies to check the nibut to check for the lipid layer thickness and the tear meniscus size so these are some of the cases here is a case of a moderate mgd which was uh, prior to uh, doing a uh, refractive surgery this patient underwent a refractive surgery without any treatment to the mgd with any sort of irpl treatment to the mgd basically the patient was only on warm compresses and uh, we found that this patient developed quite a severe uh, drk a uh, dlk following the uh, lasik surgery whereas on the contrary a, a pre operative mgd patient here given a pre operative irpl treatment only a single sitting was given in this case before the uh, uh, refractive surgery and the outcomes were much much improved in cases of a severe mgd with a loss a grade three loss of the mebovin glands and a very very poor lipid layer as can be seen in this slide a multi treatment approach is warranted so basically we need to do the lid compressions we need to do the lid massage as well as a combination with irpl and an addition with tropical steroid tropical cyclosporin and vitamin d supplement to give a good result uh another ca uh, case scenario where you have a rheumatoid arthritis patient who's got rheumatoid arthritis since almost 15 years with the symptoms of typical dry eyes on examination shows no loss of mebovin gland a normal lipid layer as can be seen here the normal lipid color is seen over here however this patient has a lower tear meniscus height a low nibut so obviously this is an acquired deficient dry eye and such cases would definitely not uh, benefit with an irpl treatment the published data also proves that in cases of rheumatoid arthritis uh, ER, uh, uh, irpl treatment is therefore not effective and the uh, the recommended treatment here would be a combination of steroid a uh, topical steroid cyclosporin lubricants including prehalose topical tacrolimus ointment as well as in severe cases an autologous serum uh, serum so in conclusion the irpl is a proved and tested treatment for evaporative dry eyes mgd and lipid layer deficiency it is useful prior to refractive surgery in patients with mgd and can be considered in symptomatic post operative post operative refractive patients it's useful prior to cataract surgery especially in premem iol cases in patients with pre existing mgd and can be considered in the symptomatic treatment in cases of post operative dryness thank you thank you for your kind attention